Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. This uh, set of notes here is going to be on inverse functions. Uh, as you can read there, uh, functions inverse is found by exchanging the domain, which is the x, and the range, which is the y, of the function. So I, I've given you a relation here. So remember, a relation is just some set of points that's related in some way. Um, and I have an xy table here. Now, in your calculator, the xy table is vertical, up and down, but here it's horizontal. So I have points 1, negative 1, 2, 0, 3, 1, and 4, 1. Um, <clears throat> and an inverse is by taking the x and y and basically flip-flopping them. So as you can see down here in this second table, I've taken the y values and made them the x values. And I've taken the x values and made them the y values. Um, so as you can see down here on the graphs, I've taken the relation and that's its graph right there. So I have point one negative one, and that's right there. And then I have two zero, uh, three one, and four one. And then I have the inverse graph over here, and negative one one, that's my first point right there, and that's this point right there, and so on. Zero, two, one, three, one, four. Now I've taken both of those functions and I've put them on one graph, which is this graph right here. And as you can see, they are reflected about a line, that red line right there. Now if you remember back from uh, geometry, reflecting means if I folded the graph on that red line, the blue and the black dots would cover each other. You would only be able to see one set of dots instead of two. Um, and the equation for that line is y equals x. So a relation and its inverse are always reflected <clears throat> around the, the line y equals x. Always, always, always. It's a way to check your answer when you're doing these inverse problems. Um, so we're going to do uh, some notes to show how you're going to do this because we're not going to be given you know, a set of points like that. And even if we are given a set of points for an equation, it's an infinite number of points. So if I'm given a line like that, there's an infinite number of points along that line. So I can't just take the x and y values and switch them, or else I'd be writing them forever. So we have to find some other way to do that. All right, so that other way to, of doing that is this procedure here. And it's a very simple procedure. It's two steps. Switch x and y, solve for y. Switch x and y, solve for y. So we're going to find the inverse of y equals 3x plus 1. All right, so again, if I was to make up an xy table here, and if you look in your calculator, and if you graph that and look in the calculator under the table function, you would see an infinite number of points. So I cannot literally just take the y and x values and flip-flop them because... There's just too many of them. So I can actually find the equation of the inverse. So step number one, I'm going to take y and x. Take, literally take the letters y and x and flip them. So I have x equals 3y plus 1. Step number two, solve for y. I want to get y right there by itself. So in order to do that, the first thing I want to do is get rid of this 1. So I'm going to move the 1 to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. Okay, and now I want to get the y by itself, so I'm multiplying by 3, so in order to get rid of the 3, I need to do the opposite, which is divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So I'm going to end up with y on the one side, and I'm actually going to make it on the left-hand side. It really doesn't matter, but I'm going to put it on the left, because that's the way you're used to seeing it. And I'm going to put the x minus 1 over 3 on the right-hand side. And that is the inverse of that. So in order to show that, I'm going to put y to the negative 1. It really doesn't mean anything. It's just a way of denoting that this function right here is the inverse of that function right there. Um, so that would be my final answer. Now, if you look at the table, if you graph this value right there, that, that equation right there, you would have a table full of x and y values. If you graph this function right here, you would have another set of x and y values. But if you would notice, the x and y values would be flipped. So that means that this graph 
the graph of the original function and the graph of the inverse are inverses of each other. Um, and if you graph them both on the same graph and also graphed y equals x, you would see that um, they are reflected about that axis or that line y equals x. So let's go ahead and graph these functions, these equations on the calculator. So we started off with uh, the equation 3x plus 1. And I'll go ahead and hit graph. And there's the graph of our original function. And now I'm going to go ahead and um, graph the inverse function, which is x minus 1 divided by 3. And I have to put that x minus 1 in parentheses because anytime you do any kind of a operation in the numerator or denominator, you have to put that whole numerator denominator in parentheses. So I want x minus 1 all over 3. If I left out the parentheses, I would just divide 1 divided by 3 and then take x minus that. But I don't want that. I want the whole numerator divided by 3. All right, let's go ahead and graph it. And there's my inverse function. Now, it's hard to tell if they're actually um, reflected over the line y equals x. So let's go ahead and put the line y equals x on there. Oops. All right, so y equals x. And now when I graph it, it will be easier to see. So there's my two original functions, my, my original function and my inverse. And there's y equals x. And now you can actually tell when I, if I could cut that screen out and fold it over this line y equals x, this line would cover up that line. Now it might not be readily apparent because your screen is not a square. It's actually a rectangle. So it's a little bit distorted as it is on the screen. but you will be able to tell if you're looking at two functions and one is not a reflection of y equals x, it will be readily apparent to you. So I'm just doing this as a check so it looks like I did it right, that other problem I did it right. And you can always do this on your calculator to check your answers if you'd like. Hi there, it's me Mr. B. Let's find the inverse of f of x if f of x equals 5x minus 4. So that right there means the inverse of f of x. So my original function is f of x equals 5x minus 4. I want to find the inverse of that. Now sometimes it will actually, the question will actually say, find the inverse of the function. And in other times it might actually look like this, where it says find f of to the negative 1, or h to the negative 1, or g to the negative 1 of x. But that just essentially means find the inverse. All right, so two-step process here. First step, switch x and y. Now, I don't have a y, but we all know that f of x or g of x or h of x just means y. So I have y equals 5x minus 4. All right, so I just replaced the f of x with a y. So let's switch the letters x and y. So x equals 5y minus 4. Second step, solve for y. So I need to get the y by itself. So let's add 4 to both sides. So x plus 4 equals 5y. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And on the right-hand side, I just have a y. So I'm going to move that back to the left-hand side because that's just the way you're normally going to see it. And then I'll move the x plus 4 all over 5 to the right-hand side. Now, my original function was f of x, but this has a y right here. So I want to change it back. So let's make it f of x. And this is actually the inverse of f of x. And that's going to equal x plus 4 all over 5. So this is my final answer. Now, that's the important part, the x plus 4 over 5. But let's get some practice in writing it the right way. So the inverse of f of x, f to the negative 1 of x, equals x plus 4 over 5. Hi, so let's go ahead and uh, check our example um, by graphing um, the inverse and its, uh, and its original function. All right, so let's go ahead and clear out what I have. So let's go ahead and, and uh, graph the first equation, which is 5x minus 4. And there's my equation. And there's my line. There's my graph. Uh, let's go ahead and graph the inverse. So remember, if I want to do the 
um, a function or an operation in the numerator or denominator, I have to put the whole thing in parentheses. So uh, x plus 4 all divided by 5. And let's go ahead and include our y equals x, because remember these two um, functions, these two equations, should be reflected around y equals x. All right, let's go ahead and graph. So there's my inverse, and there's y equals x, and it does in fact look like they are reflected about that line. And it looks like that we did a good job and got the right answer. Hi, there's me, Mr. B. Let's find the inverse of h of x if h of x equals x plus 4. Uh, first step, switch the letters x and y. However, I don't have a y here, but again, h of x just means y, so y equals x over 4. All right, first step, switch x and y, so x equals y divided by 4. Second step, solve for y. This is easy in this case. All I have to do is one operation. I'm dividing y by 4, so to get rid of the 4, I need to multiply both sides by 4, do the opposite. So I'm going to end up with 4x equals y. And let's just write it the right way. So I want to replace the y with h of x. And this is the inverse. Sorry about that. This is the inverse um, of h of x. So I need to make sure I put my h to the negative 1. Um, so my final answer is the inverse of h of x equals 4x. Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. Let's find the inverse of g of x if g of x equals x squared minus 1. Um, we're not going to do a lot of square roots and squares, but I did want you to see an example of it just in case. Um, and so the first thing we want to do is switch x and y. And uh, again, I want to just make that a y. So y equals x squared minus 1. All right, so first step, switch x and y. So x equals y squared minus 1. Step number two, solve for y. Um, so I want to get rid of this negative 1. So in order to get rid of it, I need to do the opposite of it to both sides. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So x plus 1 equals y squared. All right, now I need to undo the square. So to undo a square, I'm going to take the square root. So if I take the square root of one side, I have to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of y squared is y. For example, the square root of 3 squared is 3, because 3 squared is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 4 squared is 4. So the square root of y squared is y. Now, on the left-hand side, I have the square root of x plus 1. Now, I have to add something special to the front of that, and that is a, um, a plus-minus sign. Because if I take the square root of 9, we all know the square root of 9 is 3. It's the number that I can square to get 9, so 3 squared is 9. But I can also take negative 3 and square it, and also get positive 9. So I have to account for that. And we don't really worry about it most of the time, but in this case, we have to worry about it because I can square a positive 3 and get 9 or a negative 3 and get 9. Just like I can over here, I can square a positive square root of x plus 1 and get y or negative square root of x plus 1 and also get um, uh, y. So I need to account for that. So... Uh, I have my y by itself at this point, so now I just need to write it the right way. So I'm going to switch the y to the other side, just like I have in the other examples. Um, but instead of writing y, I'm going to write g of x. And I'm also going to put my inverse, just to denote that these two things right here are the inverses of each other. So the inverse of g of x equals positive and negative square root of x plus 1. Again, you're not going to see many of these kinds of examples, but I just wanted to show you uh, just so you saw an example of it.